No, normally if any thought comes to your mind and if I ask you, is it your thought or your colleague's thought? You will say, sir, what are you saying? Of course, these are my thoughts. I possess my thought. So that is a possession of thought. So we know normally. So the normal experience which we have, we know our thinking is our own. So the thoughts which come to our mind, we know these are our own thoughts. And also we know that we control our thinking. For example, suppose uh, you're thinking about uh, let us say your duty roster or you're thinking about your next presentation in the department or and right now i say okay let's uh, think about that uh, you are next year in this time where you are in goa so you will be able to have that thought that means we control our thought this is our normal experience now in some psychiatric illnesses there is either loss of control of thinking patient says i'm not able to control my thoughts they are occurring repetitively i'm not able to control and sometimes there is loss of sense of a possession of thinking then these are not my own thoughts somebody else influence or somebody else possess my thoughts so let's talk about disorders of possession of thought so generally when we talk about these disorders we have two main patterns of these disorders one is obsessions and compulsions so again you can remember obsessions they rhyme with a possession now so disorders of obsession and compulsion these are disorders of possession also the second phenomenon under this is a thought alienation again as the name suggests alien my thoughts are under somebody else's influence also sometimes referred to as passivity of thought and in fact in sense these are also sometimes described as delusions of control of thinking which we'll discuss in detail now also one more category sometimes is or one more pattern is included again just for you know completing the list one can know about it that rigid control of thought and intolerance for variation that becomes habitual with an encastic or obsessional personality again that is also sometimes described under disorders of possession of thought so the first two are the main category which we are going to discuss in detail so let's start with first obsessions and compulsions now obsessions and compulsion these are obs- uh, unacceptable thoughts that are accepted by the patient as being under his control but they are resisted so let's come to the definition what is the definition of obsession many times you are asked to define and you can use this definition so it is given by schneider so obsession an obsession occurs when someone cannot get rid of a content of consciousness although when it occurs he realizes that it is senseless or at least that it is dominating and persisting without cause so this is the definition of obsession so again if we understand this here it mentions that one cannot get rid of the content of consciousness so there are some content which the person is not able to get rid of it so that is not under the control and when it occurs the person realizes these are senseless again very important in obsessions the person knows that these are irrational senseless thoughts or at least that these are dominating and persisting without any cause these are irrational so this is how we define obsession now we will talk about when we discuss uh, obsessive compulsive disorder separately you know i use usually use this mnemonic you can remember some of the characteristic of obsession by this mnemonic so the mnemonic which i use is uh, rosy these are repetitive these are repetitive intrusive these are repetitive intrusive these are patient's own patient acknowledges that these are my own thoughts and for the patient these are senseless these are senseless the person wants to resist them but these are irresistible again just for your understanding you can use this uh, mnemonic but of course whenever you are defining one should uh, define by these definitions which have been mentioned now louis he basically described three essential features of these obsessions one is there is a feeling of subjective compulsion a resistance is there towards it and there is preservation of insight so these are the three features which were described by louis related to obsessional thoughts now also there is no loss of contact from reality you know as we compare it with other symptoms let us say such as delusion in delusion there is a loss of basically contact from reality while there is no loss of contact with reality person acknowledges that these are senseless the person wants to resist not able to resist them now also thus one should differentiate uh, these obsessions from hallucination delusions from uh, mood disturbances so these cannot be obsessional in the form because they are not experienced as senseless 
सो पर्सन हैविंग डिल्यूजन ऑफ परसिक्यूशन माई नेबर वॉन्ट्स टू किल मी सो दैट पर्सन अगेन इज नॉट कंसिडरिंग दिस थॉट एज अ सेंसलेस थॉट इन फैक्ट द पर्सन इज कन्विंस्ड सो दीज आर नॉट ऑब्सेशनल इन नेचर नॉर देर इज एन अटैम्प्ट टू गेट रेड ऑफ दीज सो हेलूसिनेशन डिप्रेश डिल्यूजन मूड डिस्टर्बेंस द पर्सन इज नॉट एबल टू और इज नॉट अटैम्प्टिंग टू गेट रेड ऑफ दैन सो दीज आर अगेन अंडरस्टैंड दीज आर नॉट ऑब्सेशंस द ऑल्सो क्रेविंग ऑफ सब्सटेंसेज मेनी टाइम्स पेशेंट विद सब्सटेंस डिपेंडेंस सच एज एल्कोहल डिपेंडेंस मे हैव यू नो स्ट्रॉन्ग अर्जेस और क्रेविंग टू कंज्यूम दैट सब्सटेंस और एब नॉर्मल ड्राइव ऑफ सेक्शुअल डिविएशन मे अकर इन सर्टन पीपल दीज अगेन आर नॉट इन अ स्ट्रिक्ट सेंस कंपल्शन और ऑब्सेशंस वाई बिकॉज दे डू नॉट कॉन्ट्रवीन पर्सन विल दे आर नॉट अगेंस्ट द विल ऑफ द पर्सन ऑल दो पेशेंट मे डिसक हिमसेल्फ फॉर हैविंग सच विशेज but again he does not consider them against his will so again these uh, important points help us differentiate obsession from other uh, of these uh, phenomena now let's discuss obsession so we'll discuss obsessions in two ways first we'll talk about various form or uh, structures of the phenomena and then we'll talk about content content of obsession means uh, it is reflecting the meaning so again let's talk about form now when we read form various authors have tried to describe this form in different ways what we have done is we have tried to clump them all together and give you a list so again if you read sims uh, you read you know some articles such as uh, phenological analysis of uh, symptoms in ocd by salman akhtar so we will get various forms so we have clumped all these together so we'll discuss various obsessions uh, form in the uh, form of obsessional thoughts obsessional images obsessional impulses ruminations fears or phobias doubts and various miscellaneous form so let's first talk about obsessional idea or thought now these basically may be simple for example a person is having few notes uh, in his mind that become very repetitive and they are resisted and these may even be complicated so there may be few words which become repetitive and uh, he is resisting and these may be more complex may become more ritualistic sometimes they may even take the form of contrast thinking for example a person is compelled to to think opposite when something is said in front of the person for example somebody in front of the patient says uh, god is great so the person is compelled to think opposite in his mind so the person may think in his mind it is dog so this can also be you know contrast thinking may also occurs in these obsessional ideas or thoughts next is obsessional images now normally we have images in our mind so suppose if i ask you uh, you know you, you might have been to any hilly area if i ask you to create a hilly area image of an hilly area which you have been to uh, you know last time so you'll be able to create that image that is normal imagery now sometimes these uh, images also may occur in the way form of obsessions now these may be vivid but always known by the patient to be product of his own mind so patient is having these repetitive uh, images and he knows that these are his uh, own mind's images now again if uh, you know it would reconnect what we have discussed in disorders of perception there is something known as pseudo hallucination now what happens that at times these obsessional images may be so vivid that they can be mistaken for a pseudo hallucination so again very important pseudo hallucination we have talked about in disorders of perception hallucinations and pseudo hallucinations how we differentiate one of the point is that hallucination they occur in the outer objective space while pseudo hallucination they occur in the inner inner subjective space that is in the mind's eye now these images obsessional images are also occurring in the inner subjective space but again difference we know is that these pseudo hallucinations they are very clear and the patient knows that these are not under the control while obsessional images we know that these may not be very clear and at some level they may be in the control of the person so again one should be able to differentiate sometimes they may be so clear that it they may be mistaken for pseudo hallucination but when you are seeing you know obsessional images in the patient try to you know rule out that you are not dealing with pseudo hallucination now these can be divided into four types in fact de silva divided them into four types and we can remember these uh, four types of obsessional images by the mnemonic ocd2 
सो वट आर दीज इमेज वन इज ऑब्सेशनल इमेज कंपल्सिव इमेज डिजास्टर इमेज एंड डिसरप्टिव इमेज सो ओ सी डी टू टू डीज आर देयर सो लेट्स डिस्कस दीज इमेज वन बाय वन फर्स्ट इज ऑब्सेशनल इमेज सो दीज बेसिकली डिपिक रेपिटेटिव अनवॉन्टेड इंट्रूजिव कन कॉम्बिनेशन सो देर आर सर्टन इंट्रूजिव अनवॉन्टेड कॉम्बिनेशन विच आर अकरिंग एंड नाउ द पर्सन इज हैविंग दोज इमेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल इमेज ऑफ ब्लड फ्लोइंग images of uh, certain injuries sometimes person may have images of his own uh, graveyard so these are obsessional images second is compulsive image now when we talk about compulsive image these depict compulsive behavior by rectifying either and obsessional image you know for example a woman saw a, a dead body in the coffin and now uh, the women women had to imagine that person living so these may occur like this or they may be an independent compulsive image next is a disaster image now as the name suggest these may occur in uh, compulsive checkers now many times uh, people have these compulsive uh, checking for example a housewife uh, she compulsively check the gas uh, knob in the kitchen so these compulsive checkers who not only have the fear that disaster will occur unless they uh, check so she may have this fear that if she does not uh, check the gas knob uh, her house will burn she also sees the disaster happening in fantasy so that a lady may say that i also get these images that my house is burning so this is a disaster image lastly disruptive image is they may intrude while compulsive rituals are being carried out so when a person is you know carrying out a compulsive ritual these images may come and they necessitate the ritual being recommended so they may again uh, lead the patient to do those compulsions again so these are disruptive as the name suggest they are disrupting when the person is carrying out those compulsive rituals so there are four types of obsessional images which you can remember next is obsessional impulses now impulses as we know strong urge to carry out actions which may be trivial or may be socially disruptive or even may be assaultive so patient is having those impulses now these impulses may be to touch to count to arrange the objects or even to uh, commit certain anti social acts so patient may have those impulses now it is not very usual uh, for the person to carry out sometimes yes they may carry out those act as well more commonly you know ex obsessions with the suicide and homicide impulses in depressed patient they may in fact uh, more commonly carry out the act so these are obsessional impulses now next is obsessional rumination here the patient may have pseudo philosophical ideas which are obsessional in nature now they may be irritatingly unnecessary repetitive and usually they achieve uh, no conclusion but the person is may ha is having those pseudo philosophical ideas why the earth is round why the sky is blue where is god such uh, pseudo philosophical ideas may occur as a rumination next is obsessional fear or phobias now here these are basically consisting of groundless fear which patient realizes is dominating without any cause so patient is having uh, fears or phobias uh, which are occurring without any cause now unlike obsessional impulses there is no actual urge to uh, you know involved here so here the person does not have an urge uh, you know to do those but there is these fears which are occurring again and again for example uh, let us say a boss is having a fear uh, talking about his interpersonal relationship issues with his wife in front of the employees although he has no wish to do that but he is having fear that what if he uh, you know discuss those issues in front of the employee so this is obsessional fears or a phobia next is obsessional doubts now these are basically an inclination not to believe that a completed task has been accomplished by the person satisfactorily now this uh, occurs you know uh, commonly in patients with ocd that after uh, checking the door once they will have these doubts that uh, you know they have not bolted the door properly or after coming out of the room they will have these doubts that they have not uh, turned off the lights of the room so these are basically obsessional doubts next is miscellaneous miscellaneous is uh, when the obsessions they are not 
classified in other categories then we put them under the miscellaneous category so these are various forms of obsession now let's talk about the content so the content basically is reflecting the meaning uh, in the obsession so these again may be of various types dirt and contamination then aggression may be there inanimate uh, impersonal may be there then sex may be there religion may be there and there may be other miscellaneous content of obsessions now earlier uh, the theme was uh, of sexual obsessions were common people were more worried about sex so many times you know previously more of these uh, sexual obsessions were there in the content nowadays what we see is uh, the concerns of doing harm is more uh, seen in people you know maybe modern man is preoccupied now with aggression so lot of uh, these fears of doing harm uh, we see and again content is very important when we are seeing in uh, obsession in a patient content is very important because sometimes uh, the content may create a great deal of anxiety many times we see you know if such as ocd you know uh, adolescent uh, or young adults are coming with ocd and many times uh, sexual content or content uh, that is religious in nature may create a lot of panic and anxiety so again there is importance of uh, the you know content of obsession and one should always try to see many times you are able to make a diagnosis of ocd but uh, you know always focus on the content as well because content may create a lot of anxiety in the person and because of that uh, there may be a lot of other symptoms in the patient so one should be very careful when we are dealing with such patients now when we talk about obsession they can be seen in obsessional states such as uh, ocd now sometimes patient with ocd may also have delusion and hallucination and uh, again it may be very difficult to distinguish the two so again one should be very careful when we are now uh, seeing these symptoms in the patient they can also occur in depression even in schizophrenia in psychotic disorder they can occur even in organic states such as post encephalitic state they can also occur in various other states they may occur so obsessional may be seen in various disorders now let's talk about compulsions now these compulsions are in fact obsessional motor acts that may result from an obsessional impulse uh, which may need directly to action or they may be mediated by an obsessional mental image or thought so these are basically obsessional motor acts now they may not always be uh, necessarily mediated by obsessional thoughts so sometimes all the uncommon we also may find obsession uh, compulsions without uh, the underlying obsessional thoughts now for example obsessional fear of contamination may lead to compulsive washing so the person is uh, washing the hand again and again now compulsions may manifest themselves as acts as rituals or as various behaviors now patient has an awareness that his act or thought is voluntary and can be resisted with the difficulty so the person has this awareness but overall pattern of thinking and behavior is experienced subjectively as inevitable so it is ultimately futile to struggle so person you know has this uh, awareness that it may be futile to struggle although the person tries to resist uh, these uh, compulsions now when we talk about uh, the forms of compulsion they can be of two categories one is a yielding compulsions and the other is controlling compulsion now as the name suggests yielding compulsion means that a compulsive act that gives expression to the underlying obsessional urges so yielding the person is yielding out to the obsession so here for example a person you know has a doubt that his family will get an accident or will get involved in the accident if he does not uh, shout his name five times so the person is yielding out he is shouting five times to you know prevent uh, accident from happening which he is having that obsessional thought so he is yielding uh, to these obsession so these are yielding compulsions next is controlling compulsion so as the name suggest here a compulsive act that tends to divert the underlying obsession without giving expression to it for example a person is having sexual impulses towards a colleague and the person you know prevents them from happening by uh, doing five sit ups so these are controlling compulsions